Hello and welcome to Box, where we unbox, review and demonstrate the latest tech. Today we have with us the Samsung QN85A Neo QLED TV in 65 inches. As the entry level model in the QN range, you can experience the beauty of Neo QLED at a more affordable price. Making the leap into creating displays out of the finer quantum dot LEDs, Samsung are making their mark in the mini LED market. But with quality comes cost, which is out of reach for some. But luckily, this QN85A brings you that futuristic, brilliant picture quality in large sizes, but at a fraction of the cost. Getting straight into the box, you'll find all your loose accessories such as the remotes, user manuals, power cables and stand attachments in the opening. The outer casing just slides away giving you easy access to lay it down flat for attaching the stand. Now this stand is slightly different to other models in the QN range. It's a flat rectangular 10 by 15 inch base with a supporting arm containing a hidden cable tidy compartment. It easily screws together using the 8 screws provided for a relatively quick fit on the back. As you can see, it fits perfectly onto our TV stand here, which is good to know for those choosing not to wall mount, measuring at about 15.5 inches wide to 9 inches deep. Of course, it does come with a vase mount on the back for easily fitting to the wall for more space. So taking a look at the back of the TV here, you get that nice clean brush metal design, as well as a strip of connections on the left hand side for easy access. You also get a series of cable tidy channels for directing the cables nicely to the hidden compartment on the back of the stand. In terms of connections, you get two USBs, one optical audio output, four HDMIs, a LAN port, and a variety of ports for your satellite and cable connections. It does have four HDMIs, but only port four supports 2.1 at 120Hz connectivity for both of your next gen consoles, while all of the others are 2.0. You do, however, get one eARC with HDMI 3, which is great for connecting a soundbar and saving that 2.1 compatible HDMI for your console. So I just want to take a moment to have a look at just how wonderfully thin this display is. Every year these displays get thinner and thinner, but the best part about this is the clear sign that internal display tech is getting better. I was really surprised to see that you get the new solar powered smart remote with this lower end QLED. It's great to have if you don't want to rely on batteries, but just remember to put it face down near a light source so it's always ready to use. I've been using this remote for a couple of hours now and I've noticed that it's only gone down to 43% after using it straight out of the box. You also get a USB-C port on the bottom if you just want to give it a quick charge. Okay, so booting it up for the first time means going through a large amount of setup screens. You need a Samsung account plus any Wi-Fi passwords to hand as these are essential to the initial setup. It does take you through some of the personalised features, such as connecting to any of your favourite voice command systems, that you may want to activate or disable before getting into use. You can do this right here, but if you don't have time, you can easily skip this and set it up for later. Now that's all set up, you're free to get straight into watching your favourite shows and movies through whatever input you favour, but you can also choose from any of the inbuilt services on the Samsung pop-up and universal menus displayed in this easy to navigate tile system. But on the main pop-up menu, you'll find all of your basic tools that you use most, such as settings, Samsung specific features like multi-view and an abundance of the most popular streaming apps. One of my favourite things about these new Samsung models is the auto recognition on certain inputs. So say you connect an Xbox, it will recognise it as a console and adjust the settings accordingly, even labelling it correctly so you can find it quickly in the settings which is pretty smart. So let's get into one of the most important parts, the display specs. The QN85A has a 3840x2160 display resolution which gives you a full 4K picture, alongside the accompanying HDR10 Plus and Quantum Dot LEDs that make up the image. Your picture will be super sharp with those deep blacks and contrast, beautiful colours and consistent upscaling quality in pretty much everything you watch. Of course you'll notice you won't get Dolby Vision with this, but as you can see the HDR10 Plus still does an excellent job in its place. To put all of this to the test, I played a few older shows on top of the latest movies to see what it can really do. Amazingly, shows like Friends look great even in this 65 inch size, which is pretty impressive. And of course, some of these high quality cinematic shows, such as the kind of thing you'll see on Disney Plus, look just as stunning as intended. So one of the most interesting things I found about the QN85A is that even though it's the lowest price model in the range, you will get a lot of features that you'll find on the higher end models, but just in its base form. 
you get some favorites such as the AI adaptive picture and upscaling that keep all of your content looking sharp across the board, while constantly altering the picture to room brightness to save you the trouble of changing settings throughout the day. You'll find all of this encompassed into the intelligent picture mode, which will prompt you to activate on setup or you can toggle it on and off in the quick settings bar. I like to see that you still get the wide viewing angle on the QN85A. It may not be as powerful as the ultra wide viewing angle that you'll find on some of the higher end models, but it's a good feature to have as you still have the whole picture in full quality even at a sharp angle. Now you may not notice them at first, but when you do realise that they're there, you'll come to appreciate what the features do so much more that you'll never want anything different. Going even deeper into the picture, I wanted to give you an idea of how the picture performs in terms of brightness. This is an IPS panel with a mini LED backlight and local dimming. Now on top of all of this, I found that the brightness is surprisingly better than I thought, especially as it's supposed to have a lower peak brightness and it's the budget model out of all of the TVs in its range. Black uniformity was especially good thanks to the improved dimming that Samsung have made this year, meaning that the contrast is still good quality with light bleed and blooming not too bad in turn. Though sometimes in the subtitles you may see some slight blooming and dark scenes, but honestly I couldn't see anything overly distracting, as overall it looked quite sharp with strong contrast. Of course, if you're not too happy with the picture performance in the content that you're currently watching, you can easily alter things up by toggling through picture modes in the quick settings menu that shows you how it affects the image in real time. It's just another easy method of getting the right image that's comfortable to you, without deep diving into all of the complex sliders that you'll find in the main settings menu. Now even though the QN85A is not the top model that Samsung have put out this year, it does have brilliant sound output just on its own. You may want to opt for a soundbar system later down the line with the help of the eARC and Q-Symphony boost as the TV audio does fall a little flat on the deep bass in places, but overall I found the sound quality to be perfectly fine in movies, shows and even games. Of course it helps when you have an array of audio enhancements such as Dolby Digital Plus and object tracking sound, to bring a more cinematic experience to your standard TV speakers, offering that depth you just don't find in budget TVs. The last thing I must cover is gaming on this TV. Now if you have one of the latest consoles such as the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, then you're going to want a display that matches the content that they put out. You can get that 4K at 120Hz gameplay here, and you can achieve that with HDMI 4 on this TV with both of these consoles. If you have the Xbox Series X for example, it will tell you what features are compatible with your console, and as you can see here, it's green for the majority, which is good to see. But in general, you get full access to the Game Bar feature, which allows you to monitor all of your gaming specs in real time. Just holding down the play pause button brings up a pop-up menu that shows statuses such as input lag, FPS, HDR, variable refresh rate and your sound output so you'll always know when you're playing at full quality taking out the guesswork. It also has some lesser known features that I find really help in those darker titles. The dynamic black equaliser I found really helped when bringing up those blacks so I could see everything in the shadows that you wouldn't normally see without bleaching out the rest of the picture by just bringing up the brightness. I found it was really helpful on the hunt for collectibles but also for seeing enemies in the shadows before they could do any lasting damage. So after playing a few high speed games like Forza Horizon 4, I could definitely see the difference that the game mode was making. I hardly saw any stuttering when crashing through walls and there was no tearing or deformities at all when racing past opponents at high speed. It's this kind of next level tech that really helps getting the latest TV models all worth it in the end. So after spending a few hours with the QN85A, I found this TV surprisingly high quality compared to the other low budget models on the market right now. The picture looks great with even standard definition content and I like how well it works with my next gen console. So what do you think of the QN85A from Samsung? Let us know in the comments below and if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe to Box where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always thanks for watching.